So if you guys have been ranking your articles on Google for a while, you know Google likes to throw some amazing challenges to us as content creators, right? From Hummingbird to Penguin to Panda to Medic, and now we have Page Experience. <sighs> Honestly speaking, page experience is not something new. A big part of page experience is page speed and page speed has been around for quite a while. And if I'm not wrong, Google mentioned page speed optimization since 2017 or 2018, but it wasn't that serious. It is until now that Google has packaged page speed with largest contentful pane and cumulative layout shift and name it Core Web Vitals, which is the page experience update. Whenever Google rolls an update that requires us to do something, it is never a pleasant experience for us, but we've got no choice but adhere to it, right? But one thing I want to point out is that although page experience is important, Google still puts great content quality above everything else. So even if you have the best page experience, but your content is subpar, it doesn't guarantee you a top spot on Google search. But on the other hand, if you are in a niche where quality content is the norm, which means almost every content on the search engine is high quality content, page experience is going to be even more important because it's going to be considered as a ranking factor and that's why we have to pay attention to this. So our focus in this video is to decipher the stuff mentioned in Google PageSpeed Insights and I will try my best to turn those hard to understand terms into layman terms so you know where to focus your attention without hiring an expensive web developer to solve the issues for you. And yes, this video is not for techy people and it's definitely not for web developers. It is for us who don't don't understand a single line of code to try and understand what's happening behind the scenes of our websites. This video is made as a resource for beginners to know and understand all the metrics and audits. So I'll be going through every single audit in Google PageSpeed Insights. So whatever audits your web page is flagged with, feel free to use the timestamps in the video description to skip ahead. But if you watch through the entire video, I would really appreciate that. And as a gift for watching the video all the way through, I will share with you a strategy to overcome PageSpeed inside. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Hey, this is Jack and if this is your first time on my channel, I share a lot of online business and WordPress content and my main focus is to help you get a 90 plus score on Google PageSpeed Insights. I'm not only talking about surface tips and strategies, I've actually done multiple case studies where I help a couple of my subscribers to turn their rating from 20 to 30 plus on Google PageSpeed Insights to over 90 plus. If you're interested in those case studies, you can check them out right here, but don't go there yet. I've left some links in the description so you can visit them later after this video and don't forget to smash that thumbs up button subscribe and hit the bell notification so we won't miss any of my content so let's go to the first part of google PageSpeed insights Now, some of you might be confused over why the field data is so different from the lab data. And within the field data itself, we have an extended version, which is the origin summary. So there are basically three pieces of data we are looking at, and it is definitely confusing for most of us. So what you need to understand when you're doing a page speed optimization is not to rely on the field data or the origin data because they are looking at the history of your website. What we need to look at is the lab data as it is the current data of the web page you are optimizing. With that said, in the lab data, there are six metrics and what you need to know is that these metrics are mainly focused on above the full content. If you don't know what above the full content means, it's basically this. Whatever content or elements that load on your screen when you first visit the web page. The page may have a lot of content, but the first section of the page that loads on the screen is called above the full content. So this first contentful pane is the time taken for the first object to load on a page and this gives an indicator to the user that the page is still loading instead of making them feel that it is stuck. The longer it takes for your first element to load, it will create a negative user experience. Take for example, if you visit a web page that takes more than 5 seconds to load, will you close it off because you are worried it is redirecting you to some other pages or you just don't have the patience? 
whatever it is, it creates a negative experience and Google does not like that. So to get a good score for this metric, the first object needs to load in 1.8 seconds or less. Between 1.85 seconds to 3 seconds, it is basically flagged as needs improvement or the orange warning sign. And anything above 3 seconds is poor, which is the red triangle. There are a lot of misconceptions about this. A lot of people have been saying web hosting is the main cause for this. Well, I can honestly say web hosting is part of the puzzle, but it is not a complete solution. If you look at all the audits later on, you will realize that there is only one audit that is related to the server, which is this. The rest are mostly related to the stuff you have on the website. Next, we have the time to interactive, which is the time it takes for the user to do anything on a page, like for example, scrolling or clicking on a button. Again, if the first contentful element is loaded, for example, an image, but the user can't scroll or click on a button, the user will feel stuck and that creates a negative experience. So to get a good score for this metric, the time to interactive needs to be 3.8 seconds or less. Between 3.9 seconds to 7.3 seconds, you'll be flagged with the orange needs improvement and anything above 7.3 seconds is poor. Next, the speed index is the time it takes for all the elements above the fold to load, which means this, the time it takes for all these elements over here to load. So to get a good score for speed index, the time taken needs to be 3.4 seconds or less. Between 3.4 seconds to 5.8 seconds, it will be in the orange zone and anything above 5.8 seconds will be in the red zone. The total blocking time measures the amount of time it takes between the first contentful paint and the time to interactive where in between there is a lag time where the server is performing some long tasks. The total blocking time will usually occur when a web page is executing some JavaScript. So the more JavaScript heavy your plugins or themes are, it will increase the blocking time, hence increasing the time to interactive and speed index as well. The green zone will be 200 milliseconds or less, the orange zone will be 200 to 600 milliseconds and anything above 600 milliseconds will be in the red zone. The largest contentful paint works very similarly to the first contentful paint. But what it measures is how fast the largest image or text block loads or become visible above the fold. So if you have an image that is very large in size, you will have a very poor result on this metrics. A good score for the largest contentful paint is 2.5 seconds and below and between 2.55 to 4 seconds, you will see in the orange zone and anything above 4 seconds, you will see in the red zone. And finally, the cumulative layout shift is something like this. There is an unexpected shift in your content and it annoys the user. In this example, the user just ordered 56 items unintentionally. So the lower the number, the better it is for this metric. Now let me show you an overview of how the Google PageSpeed audits relate to all these metrics. So as you can see, there are a lot of interconnected audits pointed towards the first contentful paint as well as the largest contentful paint. The largest contentful paint seem to be the most audited metric. The speed index and the time to interactive are not here because it is relative to the first contentful paint, the largest contentful paint, and the total blocking time. So in general, if you do well on these three metrics, the speed index and the time to interactive will inherently have a good score. So the cumulative layout shift is affected by these three audits. The total blocking time has nine audits. These two pink elements do not have its own metric, but they will help the page speed in general. So that's the overview. Now we are going to look into each of these audits and its related metrics. Before that, let me take some time to explain how the browser works with your website and web hosting. I feel this is really Really important for you to understand before everything else. So to make it easy for us to understand, a website consists of fonts, which is the design of the text, the CSS, which is mainly the overall design of the website, the images you have, and we also have the JavaScripts to deal with the functionality of the website. And with all these, they add to the HTML request. So HTML is basically the communication language between the browser and your server. For example, if somebody types in a website URL on Google Chrome, Firefox, or 
Microsoft Edge, it basically means the browser is requesting for the elements of the web page to load. And your web hosting server needs to fulfill those requests by sending back HTML requests, which are the CSS, JavaScripts, images, fonts, etc. So if your website has a lot of CSS, JavaScripts, and all that stuff, it will use up a lot of resources from your server to fulfill the request. So the more HTML requests there are, the more work it is for the server, and that in turn makes all the elements load slower on screen. So it is a catch-22 situation. Not one issue is independently solvable. They are all dependent on each other to get a good score on Google PageSpeed Insights. So let's first talk about the audits that are related to the first Contentful Paints and the largest Contentful Paints and how we can solve those issues with a plugin I highly recommend, which is WP Rocket. If you want to check out WP Rocket, I've left a link in the description for you to check out the latest discounts. Now, after this. Now, I promise not to use tacky terms, so this is my analogy. We'll first talk about the idea of eliminating render blocking resources. So imagine yourself running a 100 meter sprint, so you need to get to the end point as quickly as possible. Render blocking resources are basically the stuff you probably need at the end point, but you are carrying them while you're running. For example, a bottle of water. You don't need it while you're running, but you're holding it, and that's causing you to slow down. So the practical approach is to put your bottle of water at the end point so when you finish the sprint you can start consuming the water and in tacky terms this is considered deferred javascript there is a piece of script that you don't need right now when the above the full content is loading but you need it later on so you defer the javascript another method to deal with the render blocking resources is the async method so what it does is it is similar to the deferred javascript where it downloads the script with the html passing and then right after downloading the script it is executed immediately and when the execution is done the html passing would then continue now these two methods serve different purposes the go-to method is definitely the deferred javascript method because it will serve all the necessary items of the page first before it executes the javascripts but for some web pages if you defer javascript the page will not load or will have some errors because those pages needs the javascripts to be executed first before the rest of the page can load so for that case async will work better either way they are fast than the default method of executing JavaScript. So how can WP Rocket solve this problem? It has this load JavaScript deferred feature that adds a deferred tag in each of your scripts. It also has a feature called optimized CSS delivery that loads all the necessary CSS files without render blocking. And if jQuery.js is flagged as render blocking, you can copy the path from Google PageSpeed Insights and paste it in this exclude JavaScript files. So by eliminating render blocking resources, you will inherently solve this avoid chaining critical requests as they work in tandem with each other. Now, using the same 100 meter sprint analogy, it simply means you are carrying something useless or unnecessary while you are sprinting. For example, you're wearing a helmet or a 20 kg bag while sprinting. That's unnecessary. Those items do not help you reach your endpoint faster. So, unused CSS or JavaScript simply means you are carrying those heavy items. So, you gotta lose those dead weight. The latest version of WP Rocket has this remove unused CSS option, but it is currently in the beta version. So the the best way to reduce or remove unused CSS or JavaScript is to use separate plugins like Pref Matters or Asset Cleanup because the plugin will tell you what CSS or JavaScript are loading on a page. So whatever unused CSS or JavaScript PageSpeed Insights tells you, you can easily remove them using those plugins. So the same analogy again, if you are wearing heavy running shoes, there is a possibility that it will slow you down. So you need to change into lightweight shoes to make yourself run a little faster. So reducing whatever dead weight you have on you will make yourself slicker and run faster. And that's called Midify CSS and JavaScript. You are minimizing the file size of your CSS and JavaScripts. Now the idea of preloading, prefetching or pre-connecting is very similar. So we'll lump them up together and talk about it. So imagine you are an event organizer and the event cannot start without the VIP but there are already audiences in your event so technically you have to wait for the VIP to arrive before the event can start 
But the idea of preloading is instead of waiting for the VIP to arrive, you create a live stream for the VIP. So even though the VIP is not physically present, he or she is digitally present and the event can start earlier. So this is the idea of preloading. You bring something important forward so that the following events can start without waiting. So preload largest contentful paint is basically to load the largest text or image above the fold early. You will usually be flagged with this if you are lazy loading the largest contentful paint element. Now, if you don't know what is the largest contentful paint of your website, you can scroll down and find this largest contentful paint element. Then to solve this issue, if the largest contentful paint is an image, you can paste this set of code on your header script and change the link to the URL of your image. Most WordPress teams like Hayden's or Bloxy will have an area where you can add codes to your header. They will usually be in the theme customizer. The common files that will be flagged in this audit are font files from CSS style sheets. Usually these fonts will be discovered by the browser later in the process. So preloading the font files tells the browser to start downloading the font files earlier. In WP Rocket, there is this section where you can add the flag font file. So this is basically to preload third-party domains. So if a CDN URL, an image CDN or third-party fonts are flagged in this audit, you need to add a preload tag to them. If you use WP Rocket, there is this prefetch DNS request where you can add the flag resources to this area and WP Rocket will take care of it. The common issue for this audit is for example, your www.domain.com redirects to domain.com or your HTTP redirects to HTTPS. So the simplest way to avoid this is to go to the general settings on your WordPress dashboard and under the WordPress address URL and site address, you want to specify the version of the URL you want your site to have. Another common issue is some websites will have a mobile version of the website. So if somebody types in domain.com on mobile, they will be redirected directed to m.domain.com. For such a case, Google recommends using responsive designing principles instead of designing a separate version for mobile. The idea here is very simple. Just like zip files, if you compress them, they will have a much smaller file size. So enable text compression is basically to compress the HTML, JavaScript and CSS files so that the files sent from the server to the visitor's browser are smaller, hence improving the loading speed of the web page. This compression process is basically done with the gzip compression. If you install WP Rocket on your site, the gzip compression is enabled by default. So by installing WP Rocket, you shouldn't be flagged with this issue. Now for this, let me show you an example. You see, this is font number one and then it becomes font number two. The reason is this. If you are using Google Fonts, your website will need to download the font style from Google Fonts and then display the text. This takes time and in the process, no fonts will be displayed and therefore this audit will be flagged. So the simplest way to solve this is to display a web save font and then solve it with the Google Font when it's fully downloaded. If you use WP Rocket, this is the default feature as it will automatically optimize for Google Fonts. If you are flagged with this, Google PageSpeed Insights is basically telling you not to use GIF formats or GIF formats. Instead, convert the GIF to a video format, for example, .mp4 or WebM. Now this is a very important audit and network payload simply means the total file size of all the resources used on the page. For example, the images, CSS, JavaScripts, fonts, etc. The smaller your page size, the faster your page will load. The reason it is called network payloads is because mobile users will need to pay for mobile data to load the stuff on your website. So if the file size of your web page is big, it will cost more money for users to load your web page. Page. So Google PageSpeed Insights recommend a total page size of below 5,000 KB, which is about 5 MB. If your page size is larger than 5 MB, this audit will be flagged. And if you use WP Rocket, these are the features you can use to reduce payload size. And these are the nitty gritty things you can do to reduce payload size as well. For example, convert images to WebP, which we will talk about it in a while. Optimizing images and videos, we're going to talk about this as well. Reduce 
reduce the number of images and videos on the page, reduce the number of items in sliders or carousels, reduce the number of featured posts or products, break large pages into multiple smaller pages. We will be talking about this when we discuss the dome later on. Use fewer fonts, remove unnecessary widgets and plugins, and reduce the number of items in social widgets. So in general, Google likes your web page to be clean and at the same time have just enough functionality to operate your business. Google does not like your web page to have a lot of clutter. So these audits here are mainly dealing with JavaScripts. Remember when we are talking about reducing render blocking issues, these are the two ways to handle JavaScripts. It is either to delay the JavaScript or to async them. So those methods are going to be useful here. But let's first talk about lazy load third-party resources with facades. So third-party resources are often used for displaying ads. For example, ads from Google AdSense, displaying videos, for example, embedding a YouTube video, or integrating with social media. By default, these third-party resources will load as soon as the page loads. And this can cause a page to slow down by a lot. The general idea is whenever you are loading resources from somewhere else to display on your page, it is going to slow down your page. But to remedy this, you can lazy load those resources. In layman's term, lazy loading means you will only load that resources when it is needed. So for example, the YouTube video doesn't need to load until the user clicks on the video. So if you are using WP Rocket, it has this feature to replace the video with a video thumbnail or a preview image. This way, the thumbnail image will load instead of the video. The video will only load when the user clicks on the thumbnail. This will dramatically improve the site speed. Now, this is probably the most tricky audit of all. You know, the third-party resources are basically the videos, the adverts, social media connections, analytics, fonts, etc. Especially if you are displaying third-party advertisements through Google AdSense or other platforms, you will usually be flagged with this audit. But if you try optimizing the load time for ads, it may have an impact on your revenue. So there are two beginner methods to minimize the page speed effects of third-party scripts, but it may reduce your revenue. Avenue. It is unavoidable unless you select an ad platform that focuses on site speed, which I will share with you in just a while. But anyway, the first method is to delay the loading of the scripts. We have discussed about this and WP Rocket can help you with that. But delaying the ads will probably mean lower revenue because lesser ads will be displayed on a given session. Most of the time, ads needs to be displayed at least one second before it is counted as part of the revenue. But if the ads are not displayed on time, it is a wasted opportunity. The other method is to lazy load the third-party scripts. It is just like delaying JavaScripts, but the script will only be downloaded and executed when the user scrolls through to the ad section. Between these two methods for Google AdSense or any ad platforms, I would prefer the delay JavaScript method because it downloads the scripts beforehand and it is loaded by default after all the elements of the page have loaded. So before a user scrolls through the web page, the ads are probably already loaded. On the other hand, with lazy loading of ads, the user may not even see the ads. They will probably be seeing a blank space because only when the user reaches the ad section, the scripts will then be downloaded and executed at the same time. So this will reduce the revenue even more. So there is really no way at the moment to optimize the displaying of ads without sacrificing some revenue. Techie people will say to use Google Tag Manager to manage the ads, but that's not for us non-techie people. Now, the best alternative I would say is to join an ad platform that focuses on page speed. The best platform I know is Ezoic. So if you're running Google AdSense on your website, you can consider switching it to Ezoic. It may increase your revenue as well as page speed. I've left a link in the description for you to check out Ezoic. Trust me, you will never regret this. Now we've talked a lot about JavaScript execution. The more JavaScripts you have on your website, the longer it takes for your web page to load. This audit will usually be flagged if your JavaScript execution time exceeds 3.5 seconds. The common cause for a long execution time is either from a page builder or a plugin that loads a ton of JavaScripts. We will talk about how to identify those JavaScript heavy plugins later on, so do stick around. But the general thing you can do to reduce JavaScript execution time is to modify and remove unused JavaScripts. 
So what this basically means is that there are duplicate JavaScripts on your page. And the common cause for this is when you have multiple plugins that perform similar tasks. Honestly, there is more than one cause to this. So if your web page is flagged with this, you need to identify where this code is coming from. You can deactivate plugins one at a time to see which is the plugin that is causing this problem. And then you can try to find an alternative or you simply just don't use it at all. Now, this is something that we as beginners can't solve by ourselves, but we can definitely identify which other plugins that are flagged by this issue. And from there, we can contact the support team of the plugin. Honestly speaking, if a team or plugin developer is still using old school JavaScripts, we should not use their products. There is a high chance that the plugin or team has not been updated for a long time, so do take note of that. DOM is simply the acronym of Document Object Model. Every web page will have a Document Object Model. So to put it simply, every title, every paragraph, every link, and everything on your website are called nodes individually. But when you combine all of them, it is translated as DOM size. So every paragraph you write on a web page adds to the DOM size. Every link you insert adds to the DOM size as well. So if your article is super long with 10,000 words and above, you can expect a large DOM size. And that's where you need to find opportunity to split the long content into shorter content. Now the distance between each node and the root element is known as depth. And the elements below each parent node are called child nodes. PHP Insights will flag this audit when a page has more than 1,500 nodes. And the depth is greater than 32 nodes. And any one parent node that has more than 60 child nodes. Unfortunately, there is no speed optimization plugin that will solve this issue. The only way to remedy this is to work on the design or content of the web page. Try to avoid adding too many nested containers and columns on your page. And if your page has a lot of content, try to break it up into multiple pages. So the browser will process all the scripts and styles needed to display the web page. But when there is too much work to do, the thread is blocked and this delays the page load. PHP Insights will flag this audit if the processing of the scripts and styles takes more than 4 seconds to load. So to solve this problem, it requires a combination of optimization. You need to delay as many JavaScripts as possible. You need to minify CSS and JavaScripts. You need to optimize CSS delivery. So this is one of the web call vitals and there are basically three audits for this metric. The general idea for this metric is to keep all the elements of the web page where they should be after being loaded. But some elements, if you are not careful how you put them on a page, may cause layout shifts. So let's talk about this. So in the past, web developers will usually add a width and height to an image. But when responsive web design is introduced, web designers start to use CSS to size the image. Instead of putting a fixed height and width, they use percentage. So most images at one point in time do not have explicit width and height. And this causes the layout to shift after the image is displayed. By adding an explicit width and height to an image, the page will buffer some space for the image to be displayed. That's the general idea of this. So to easily fix this problem if you are using WP Rocket, it is just checking this box. Here are top 3 causes of large layout shifts. Number 1, dynamically injected content such as ads, embeds, and iframes without dimensions. Iframes are typically used for video embeds. Number 2, images without explicit height and width. We have just talked about this. And finally, some third party scripts that need to be executed before the rest of the page can load. For example, Instagram galleries. So to remedy this, the best way is to number one, identify the element that is causing the layout shift. PHP Insights will tell you that. And then for each of the elements, you want to add a container and set a fixed height and width for that container. Basically, this is telling you to use CSS property transform to animate elements on the web page. Think about if it is really necessary to have animation on that object. And if your answer is yes, then if you have the budget, hire a web developer with CSS knowledge to do that for you. Otherwise, if you want to learn it yourself, then make that object into a static object without animation first. And when you have the knowledge, you can apply the knowledge and animate that object. I've left a link in the description for you to learn how to animate objects with CSS properties. Images are a big part of any website. Without them, the website will be plain boring. So let's look into each of these audits and what they mean. 
This basically means there are images hidden above the fold. For example, when you are optimizing your desktop homepage into mobile and you want certain images to be hidden because it will not look proper on mobile devices, you can hide that image section. This image that is hidden is considered an off-screen image. And to defer the off-screen image, you need to lazy load the image. But sometimes when you have installed some plugins and activated lazy loading, some images will still not lazy load due to many reasons like conflict in scripts, or the image is nested in CSS files and not in the HTML. I know it's complicated, so you don't need to dive into this. Now here's what you can do. Defer off-screen images is a very common problem when the site owner uses a slider or carousel above the fold on the desktop version, but they hide the sliders and carousel on mobile devices. So to easily avoid this, I will recommend not to use any sliders or carousels and do not hide any images above the fold. You can do all this below the fold but not above the fold. You can easily avoid this issue when you just do that. Now I need to talk about these two together because the method to solve these issues will work hand in hand. So step number one is to identify the images flag. And then there are two methods to do this. One is the manual way and the other is using a plugin. Let's talk about the manual way first. For me, my common practice is to always optimize my images before I upload them on the website. So for that image that has been flagged, I will not use it anymore. I will delete that image from my website. But what I would do is to optimize the same image to replace it with the one that was flagged. I will take note of two things, the image dimensions and the size of the image. So for example, on desktop, the size of the image is only 400 pixels by width. Then honestly, you don't need your image width to be a thousand pixels. Just set the image width to 400 pixels and keep the aspect ratio. By doing that, the size of your image will automatically be reduced. Then I will use a free tool like Kraken.io to optimize the images. And once I downloaded the optimized version of the image, I will upload that image to the web page. Try not to upload an image with a file size of larger than 100 KB. The max you can go is 200 KB. Anything more than that will slow down your website. Sites. I've left a link in the description to Kraken.io. It is a completely free tool with no restrictions. So that's the manual way. The plugin method is just to use a plugin like Imagify or Shop Pixel to optimize your images. But this method may cause some of your images to be cropped. So honestly, this is not my recommendation. For me, I would do it the manual way and I will also use Imagify or Shop Pixel to further optimize the image without cropping the images. Now, assuming you have properly sized your image and you have optimized the image properly, the next step is to serve the image in WebP format. So plugins like Imagify or ShopPixel have this function to automatically convert your images into WebP format. So if you use any of these plugins, you will not have this problem. But in case you are preparing for the latest version of WordPress, where you can innately upload WebP images, then you can use a tool called Cloud Convert to convert all your JPEGs or PNGs into to WebP before you upload to your web page. Either way, it works. But for me personally, I prefer to use Imagify or ShopPixel. The link to Cloud Convert is in the description as well. This avoid.write is a JavaScript that forces whatever functions that are in it to execute first before the page can continue loading. It is like traffic police stopping you on your track and allowing some big shop VIP to move first before letting you go. This is usually caused by some plugins that you have installed. So try to identify which is the plugin that is causing this problem by deactivating one plugin at a time. Once you have identified the plugin, I would recommend not using the plugin any further. If you ever visit a website and you roll the wheel of your mouse, it takes a little longer for the page to scroll down. This audit is related to that. It is asking you to add a passive code to the touch and wheel event listeners your site has. This is not something that beginners can handle on their own and at the same time, being flagged with this audit doesn't mean that it has a huge impact on your page performance, so I wouldn't worry so much about this. But if you really want to solve this issue, it is usually caused by some plugins you have installed. So so deactivate one plugin at a time and figure out which is the plugin that is causing this issue.
So the layman's term for caching is like pre-making something so that you can serve it much faster later on. Like how some restaurants will pre-make their food and store it at one place so that you can serve it much faster when there is an order. We can never get that in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. That's why their food is served much slower because they are made to order. So it is exactly the same thing with caching. Your web hosting server will capture a version of your website and then store it at one place so that when the browser is requesting for the web page to load or to be displayed, your server will serve that stored version to the browser. If there is no caching, it means that your server will have to work a lot harder because every time there is a request, it has to load the entire website over and over again. Web pages and food aren't the same. Made to order for web pages doesn't mean better quality. So that's the explanation for caching. But now there is a caching policy. In layman's term, it means how long you are going to keep that frozen food before you discard it and make a new batch of it. And in tacky terms, how long are you going to store this version of your website on the server? PHP Insights will flag items that are not cached or have an inadequate caching expiry. In general, PHP Insights prefer caching expiry to be 180 days and above. So if you are using WP Rocket, you shouldn't have an issue with this as it takes care of this issue automatically. This audit is the overall picture of your speed performance. If you have too many JavaScripts and CSS requests that translate to HTML requests, then you'll be flagged with this issue. We have basically covered everything about speed optimization from modifying CSS and scripts, removing unused CSS and JavaScripts, caching, async and deferred JavaScripts and all that stuff. If you have done the optimization properly, you shouldn't be met with this issue. And if you still have this issue and you think you have done all that you can to optimize your site, let's talk about the strategy to tackle PageSpeed Insights. I've actually done a case study where I helped one of my subscribers to turn his website from a 30 plus rating on Google PageSpeed Insights to a 90 plus rating using the same strategy I'm about to share with you. There are basically four steps to the entire process, but before that, I need to declare something important which you may not like to hear. And here goes. Page builders are probably the main cause of all site speed problems. I have no doubt about that. I am not talking about new school page builders like Oxygen or Bricks Builder. I am talking about Elementor, Tri Teams, Beaver Builder, DV, and all those builders that exist since 2017. So if you are using one of those page builders, then consider switching it to Gutenberg Blocks or go for Oxygen or Bricks Builder. If you find Gutenberg Blocks too complicated, I have quite a few tutorials to show you how to build beautiful pages from scratch scratch. So without further ado, let's get into the steps. Step number one is to create a blank page and test it on Google PageSpeed Insights. That way you know what are the things that are slowing down your website by default. Because if your blank page is fetching a dismal score, it means whatever optimization you do, you will never get a good score because the foundation is weak. Step number two is to troubleshoot which are the plugins that are causing your blank page to slow down. To do this, you need to deactivate your plugins one at a time and every time you deactivate, you need to do a PHP Insights test. This will give you a good idea which are the plugins that are causing your blank page to slow down. Step number three is to rebuild pages previously created with page builders using Gutenberg blocks. Anyway, the only pages that needs a lot of design elements are the home page, the contact page, about me page, etc. Most of your blog articles do not require much editing. Step number four is to further optimize the elements of the web page with speed optimization plugins like WP Rock. I hope you now know how powerful WP Rocket is and why I highly recommend it. It is by far the best tool to optimize for page speed without breaking your website. If you want to check out WP Rocket, you can use this link. The link is in the description as well. So that's the four steps to my page speed inside strategy. Again, if you want a more detailed walkthrough on this strategy, you can check out this video at the top right. And if you want more case studies, the playlist is at the bottom. I hope these videos can help you troubleshoot and make your your website load with lightning speed. All the best to you, take care and stay safe.